my friends, hello and welcome back to the Fireside. Indeed, it has been too long, but it is a pleasure to be back here tonight. You know, it's quite a chilly evening out here, around 10 degrees Celsius, 50 Fahrenheit, as we're moving here into the fall months. And so it's the perfect time of year to sit down with a roaring fire and share a very strange and obscure fact about perhaps the greatest video game of all time, Super Mario 64. Now, I'll just get into the fact it's something that I kind of discovered while, you know, I'm sure others have discovered it too, but I've not seen anyone talk about it in any of these many Super Mario 64 icebergs or, you know, obscure and obs uh, unsettling aura videos. And I could be wrong, I could have missed it, but I thought it would come up in one of these. And I'll use this fact as a jumping off point for what we're going to do tonight. Many will know that if you're playing Super Mario 64 and you leave Mario idle, his idle animation after about a minute or so becomes Mario sleeping. Mario will literally, you know, nod off sitting down and then after another minute or two he'll kind of fall into his side and, and fall asleep. And he'll dream of spaghetti and Mamma Mia and I think maybe even Luigi, his brother, which is very sweet. And it's a great little idle animation. And of course, the great Charles Martinet voices Mario's wonderful uh, speech here. I think it's actually some of Mario's only speech in the game, in fact. You know, there's not too much of Mario talking in Super Mario 64. But something that I found quite interesting is that there's two courses on which Mario will not sleep. They are the Snow and Ice Courses, Cool Cool Mountain, and Snowman's Land. Instead of sleeping, Mario simply will blow hot air onto his hands and shiver. And I guess he knows if he falls asleep here, you know, he's toast for. He's going to get hypothermia. It's not going to be a good situation. He'll need someone to rescue him. You know, he's in sort of a, a enemy territory deep in the castle that's been, uh, you know, taken over, besieged by Bowser. And so Mario's got to look after himself. He can't be falling asleep in the cold uh, there. And so it makes sense to imagine that Cruel Cool Mountain and Snowman's Land are obviously the two coldest stages in Super Mario 64. Of course, that's pretty intuitive, right? They're the snow levels. But interestingly, there's actually one other place in the game where, believe it or not, Mario does not sleep. It is Wing Mario Over the Rainbow. You know, the bonus Secret Castle Star stage, um, very late in the game, up in the area referred to as Tippy, uh, across from Rainbow Ride. I mean, you probably know where it is. And you got to shoot around with some cannons and the wing cap to uh, collect red coins and, and get a star. And it's, it's a pretty challenging star. And, uh, you know, if you fall off, you end up in the castle mode. you got to climb all the way back up into the castle. Um, but it's very fascinating there that Mario does not sleep. Rather, he will stay up shivering and, and blowing hot air onto his hands. What I found even more compelling is that on Rainbow Ride, which is a similar level to Wing Mario over the Rainbow, Mario does fall asleep. I know, it's, it actually kind of shocked me. I was like, whoa, this is quite a revelation. Because you would think they are sort of at a similar altitude, right? They're both way up in the clouds. And you would wonder, okay, like, you know... If one place is cold enough for Mario to shiver, not sleep, then certainly the other would be as well, but no. And I think the implication at hand here is that Rainbow Ride is lower in altitude than Wing Mario over the Rainbow. That is the only conclusion I can come to. You know, maybe there's some temperature differences, I guess. Maybe Wing Mario over the Rainbow is located in the, in the Arctic Circle, 
and Rainbow Ride is, is further south, and they're at an equal elevation, that's possible too. But, you know, for all intents and purposes, what I took home from that is that Wing Mario over the Rainbow is at a higher elevation, higher altitude, and thus is colder than Rainbow Ride. And one last piece that really, you know, was an you know, additional confirmation, I suppose, is that the tower of the wing cap, you know, where you first go pretty early in the game, you look up into the sun and, uh, and uh, you get into the course, you got to collect the red coins again to activate the red switch to get wing cap. Well, Mario falls asleep there too. So I would say that that is at a similar altitude, similar temperature to Rainbow Ride, and thus warmer than Wing Mario over the Rainbow which is one of the three cold areas in Super Mario 64. And so this got me wondering, you know, could we make a little sort of tier maker list and rank the Super Mario 64 levels by temperature? And on a cool autumn evening like tonight with a roaring fire, I thought that is that perfect thing for us to do. So my friends, sit back and relax. Make yourself a warm beverage, and let's enjoy this wonderful ambiance of the fireplace in the cottage, the beautiful fireside, and let's get to ranking these Super Mario 64 courses by temperature. The first course we go into, of course, is none other than the bomb Battlefield. And you know, I'll ask you guys, you know, when you think of Bomb Battlefield, do you think of it as sort of a, a warm summer stage or a more cooler spring stage? I know for me personally, I actually kind of see it as a very summery stage. Here there's nary a cloud in the sky, as far as I can tell. Clear blue sky, you know, that vibrant blue as well that you get on really, really hot days. And I kind of imagine that, you know, it's a summer stage. And so if I could put this in my little tear maker here, I would put this in the category in the second hottest uh, tier, you know, 21 to 29 Celsius, 70 to 84 Fahrenheit for all the American folks out there. And I would say it's kind of a, a, a warm stage, not blistering hot by any means, but it's like a summery stage, you know, uh, a mid-20s stage. That's, uh, that's where I'll put it. Next, we usually go into Womp's Fortress. Now, Womp's Fortress is kind of up in the sky, right? Mario does fall asleep here, so it's obviously not as high as Wing Mario over the rainbow. But it's, uh, it's pretty high. And, you know, for that reason, I would probably put it in this, you know, it's, you're getting high through, it's cool and breezy. I'd put, say, 1 to 9 degrees Celsius, 34 to 48 Fahrenheit. And, uh, of course, not to get too far ahead of ourselves, we did already mention Rainbow Ride. And so I would put that even with Womp's Fortress, you're high in the sky, not so high to shiver. Um, and so those were in kind of the second coolest tier, in my opinion. And, of course, in the bottom tier, the sub-zero tier, the sub-freezing tier, is going to be Snowman's Land and uh, Cool, Cool Mountain. I'd probably say Snowman's Land is a little bit cooler than Cool Cool Mountain. You know, I feel like Snowman's Land is, like, icier, whereas, you know, like, minus 10, um, 14 Fahrenheit. Whereas Cool Cool Mountain is, like, a little bit below freezing, you know? I think it's kind of still snowing and, and whatnot. Okay, so after uh, Womp's Fortress, um, and we, we've talked about Cool Cool Mountain already, so on the main floor of the castle there, we're going to go into Jolly Roger Bay. Now, I find Jolly Roger Bay to be kind of an interesting and weird one, you know. It's, like, foggy. It sort of has the similar aura to Wet Dry World. And, you know, kind of this mystical, foggy, kind of unclear uh, area. And, you know, I don't really picture it being too hot nor too cold. You know, the water is swimmable. And, um... Of course, it's not swimble in, say, Snowman's Land. Obviously, you take damage. So Jolly Roger Bay certainly is on a cold level by any means. 
I don't even picture it being a, being that, you know, uh, cool. I picture it being right around room temperature, right around 20 degrees Celsius, 68 Fahrenheit. And so that's where I'm going to put Jolly Roger Bay. You know, to me, that just seems seems about right. But, you know, let me know if you if you disagree. You know, I'd, I'd always love to hear any any thoughts from you guys on this uh on this categorization it's a very important thing to do you know uh to organize these stages in n64 video games from the 90s by temperature you know we might call it something like uh goose's geological survey is what we're doing today so uh yeah let me know your input as well it's always important to have these things be peer reviewed of course now after those first four stages you know we get into Big Boo's Haunt. And I think Big Boo's Haunt to everyone is sort of the spooky fall Halloween stage. And to me, that is, you know, in the sort of 1 to 9 degrees Celsius, you know, which is like 34 to 48 uh, Fahrenheit type of, type of vibe. You could maybe make the case to put it a few degrees up, you know, 10 Celsius, 12 Celsius, you know, 50, 54 Fahrenheit. You could make the case, but I get the impression, you know, it's at night as well. It's like a Halloween night. And I think I speak for the vast majority of us who, you know, uh, grew up in North America on the Atlantic, Northeast, Midwest. You know, that's that's the majority of North America, right? There's like 150 million people. Um Halloween's always like a, a cool kind of cold night, nine or 10 degrees. So it's kind of borderline between these two tiers I have, but I think I'll stick it at, um, you know, maybe the high end of this one to nine degrees Celsius tier. I feel like that's right. You know, it's definitely kind of an unwelcoming, cool place, you know? So, I, you know, one thing I was kind of thinking about Big Boo's Haunt, it's sort of a, a unrelated side story, but you know, when you go into the sort of courtyard area of big, you know, where you get into the stage, it's usually referred to as, like, the booze courtyard, the castle courtyard. But is it really a courtyard, or is it more of, like, just, like, a backyard? You know, like, a courtyard's usually enclosed on all four sides. You know, sort of like the, uh, you know, uh, the middle area of the Pentagon, for example. But, um, really, booze castles that area is sort of just like a backyard, right? You're just behind the castle. There's kind of a fence. It's more like a fenced in backyard. Not to get too caught up on the silly semantics of this all, but, you know, that's, that's something that struck me when kind of exploring Super Mario 64, thinking about all these, uh, these temperature of the stages. Next, we're going to get into the uh, basement of the castle. We're getting into, like, the two hottest levels in the game. Very obviously the two hottest stages um lethal lava land like that's number one hottest stage in the game in my opinion uh, and shifting sand land which i think we can agree is a little bit less hot than lethal lava land you know it's it's not really close but the for the for the purposes of this video they're in the same tier which is the hottest tier above 30 celsius above 86 fahrenheit you know, lethal lava land, you're in lava. Um, you, if you fall in, you get burned. And that doesn't happen on shifting sand land. You know, you don't get burned by touching the sand. So lethal lava land is certainly hotter. Um, you know, you see videos of geologists and stuff walking around volcanoes and, and they're okay. But I feel like lethal lava land has this like elevated sort of heat position of just being like you're, you're surrounded by flowing molten lava at all times making it certainly more dangerous and precarious and you know that's pretty much all there is to say about that shifting sand land is sort of this kind of you know egyptian pyramid type of place and so obviously you know you take the average temperature in in say cairo or alexandria and it's pretty warm uh, warm enough to be in this tier for sure. Next we get to Hazy Maze Cave. You know, the, the legendary level that is now believed canonically to be the, the, the bathroom, the, the sort of septic system or cesspool of the castle. 
which is interesting in its own right. It really makes you wonder um, what's going on there. You're jumping into perhaps the cesspit and you're in this hazy maze cave full of toxic gas. But caves traditionally are cool all year round, not cold, not hot. They're kind of at this cool temperature, generally speaking. So I think this one fits pretty solidly into that 10 to 19 degrees Celsius, 50 to 67 degrees Fahrenheit tier, I would say. You know, again, there is some water. You don't take damage on the water. You know, you can swim uh, pretty easily. Dory is in there, living pretty comfortably. You know, the beast of Hazy Maze Cave, referred to in, in some regards. And, you know, if it can support biological life, um, you know, pretty pretty easily. There's scuttle bugs as well. Um, it's probably not going to be freezing, freezing cold. You know, of course, there are enemies and stuff on these other stages, but, uh, you know, a scuttle bug, I'll say, doesn't seem to have the same sort of weather protection as, like, a penguin, right? So it doesn't seem built for snow, built for super cold. And again, like, Dory, you know, the sea monster is not like a woolly mammoth. You know, you think of big creatures built for cold, you think of a woolly mammoth, and Dory certainly doesn't have, you know, fur to protect her. Is it a her or, or him, you know, someone who is more knowledgeable can let me know. And so, yeah, I, I would put Hazy Maze Cave there in that tier, 10 to 19 Celsius, I think that's appropriate. Then we're gonna get into the one and only, of course, Dire Dire Docks. No, Dire Dire Docks is an interesting case because, you know, again, like I get the feeling that unlike Jolly Roger Bay, Dire Dire Docks is sort of, I, I just feel like it's warmer, you know, it's kind of more enclosed. And so you can imagine the humidity being a bit higher. You also have like manta rays and sharks. And those are sort of more warmer climate marine creatures right you know so uh, more like almost tropical right and so i kind of actually think that dire dire docks is in the sort of 21 to 29 celsius tier you know 70 to 84 fahrenheit i would say it's probably on the lower end of that like right around 21 or 22 a little bit above you know room temperature it's just kind of a warm, more humid marine environment, in my opinion. It's not a blistering hot, sunny day by any means. You know, and again, the thing with water, especially you think Bowser's sub is there, you know, water is kind of colder than, than you know, you feel colder in 20 degree water than 20 degree air, right? That's known. Um, you know, some physicists, if there's any physicists in the comments, let me know. Uh, why that is, I forget all the exact reasons, but it is interesting actually. And so, you know, presumably if Bowser has a submarine there, Bowser and his crew are gonna be working on it. And it would be easier to sort of pick a harbor in which, you know, the temperature is warm enough where it's comfortable to work on a submarine, as opposed to, you know, some, some colder area. So I, I really like Dire Dire Docks in that tier there. And I'm, I'm confident putting it there. But let me know if you disagree. At this point, we're going to go and get upstairs. And the first level, usually, when you get upstairs that you enter is Wet Dry World. You know, of course, it's unsettling aura. I, I mentioned Wet Dry World earlier when talking about Jolly Roger Bay. And I kind of like putting in the same tier there, right around room temperature, solidly. Because, you know... I just feel like the, that kind of cold, emotionally cold, but not physically cold, right? I feel like that's kind of the case. And yeah, I, just, I, I can't really definitively say like it's going to be a hot level. It certainly doesn't seem as humid as Dire Dire Docks, and it certainly doesn't seem as cold as a level away from the sky or an Arctic environment, right? So I just, that's sort of just a, a gut feel one. But I think that's where I'll put Wet Dry World. Of course, we've already discussed Snowman's Land, the coldest level in the game. And so this leaves the two levels, um, sort of field mountain levels, which I think are interesting to talk about 
together in comparison here. We have Tall Tall Mountain and Tiny Huge Island. And you know, instinctively, what do you th which one do you think is colder? Tiny Huge Island kind of seems like the kind of same summery vibe to me as Bobon Battlefield in a lot of ways. You know, sort of the green areas of the course, I feel that way. Plus, Tiny Huge Island has like a nice beach. You know, there is a, um, uh, what do you call it, a cheap cheap or a, a bubba, one of the big fish. There's big fish. They certainly seem kind of like more tropical fish, in my opinion. Koopa hangs out there. There is sort of a gusty area around the back corner of the stage. But I feel like Tiny Huge Island is sort of more of a summery stage. And so I'll put that one in the 21 to 29 Celsius, you know, 70 to 84 Fahrenheit tier. Tall, tall mountain, on the other hand, or climbing a mountain. It's going to be at a higher elevation. It's going to be a little bit cooler. Now, I wouldn't say it's equally cool to Rainbow Ride, by any means, or even Womp's Fortress. It might be close, though. You know, it might be, might be getting close to Womp's Fortress, but you know, there's flowing water again, and, um, you know, there's some Monty Moles live there. And so I'm pretty confident putting this in the just below room temperature tier, the 10 to 19 Celsius, 50 to 67 Fahrenheit tier. And I really like it in that tier there. This, of course, only leaves two levels, one of which we've discussed and established pretty confidently, Rainbow Ride. The last one to talk about is actually TikTok Clock. Now, this is probably the hardest one to, to rank, you know? Like instinctively you kind of think it's going to be like room temperature because you're inside and i think that is where i'm going to have it end up but there's sort of two sort of counterbalancing factors that i'll say here you know one is that a there's probably no like ventilation hvac system in a large grandfather clock that'd be kind of crazy there's no evidence of it and so i'm going to presume there is none um, so it could get a little bit stuffy in there. At the same time, it is kind of like wide open and uh, kind of wind tunnel-y, you know? There's no like distinct bottom to it. You only go up and up and up. It's kind of wide open. And uh, again, because there's no HVAC system, there's going to be no heating. And that kind of gusty openness, it may, might have a bit of a cooling effect. And so all in all, I would still put it in the room temperature tier, and I'm pretty confident with, uh, with putting it there. So hey, look, there's, there's the assembled tiers of Super Mario 64's courses. And that was a pretty fun exercise to do, you know, Goose's geological survey, as we call it. You know, there's a couple other kind of sub-stages, secret stars that we could talk about. Um, you know, but they mostly kind of join in on where they're kind of matching stages do, like the, the Metal Cap Cave, probably similar to Hazy Maze Cave, um, the Secret Slide, you know, probably room temperature. I would say the same as the castle as a whole. A Vanish Cap area is kind of under the castle, might be a little bit cooler under there, kind of weird and open, you know, similar to similar to um, TikTok clock, but maybe a little bit cooler because you're lower, kind of under a, a moat. And then of course, outside the castle, just in, in, in front of the castle, that to me is kind of a clear summer day as well. And so you could get, if you really want to get into the weeds, you could uh, sort and organize all these stages as well. But I'm pretty happy with how that uh, turned out. And I hope you enjoyed this wonderful company by the fire as we sat down and ranked the temperatures, the warmth and the coolness of the Super Mario 64 stages. And I hope you enjoyed the fact that I opened this video about Mario sleeping and not sleeping on the cold stages and winging Mario over the rainbow. That's pretty rare and obscure and I hope you remember that the next time you play Super Mario 64. So with that, my friends, a huge thanks to watching this video. And uh, I'm, I'm very glad to have joined you and for you to have joined me by the fireside once again. So thanks for watching. Stay true, my friends. Good night.